Multiplying with partial products, also called the box method. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to multiply two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. First, let's review how to use the box method strategy with a two-digit number times a one-digit number. We'll multiply 64 times 5. Start by drawing the boxes. I'm multiplying a two-digit number by a one-digit number. So I need two boxes, one, two, by one box. This is a two by one array. Next, I'll break that two digit number into friendlier pieces. An expanded form is a good way to do this. So I'm gonna break 64 into 60 and four, and I'm gonna use those numbers to label the top of the boxes like this, 60 and four. And then the five, the one digit number five goes along the side. Now I'm ready to multiply. I'm gonna multiply the pieces together using the boxes to keep track of the partial products. So in this first box, I'm multiplying five times 60, which is 300. Remember, if you know five times six, 30, you know five times 60. It's just 30 with an extra zero on the end. And then in this box, I'm multiplying five times four, which is 20. And finally, I just add the partial products together, which are the numbers in the boxes. 300 plus 20 is 320, which is the answer to our multiplication problem. Now, let's look at a two digit times two digit problem, 24 times 31. First thing we need to do is draw the boxes. So this time I'm multiplying a two digit number by a two digit number. So I need to draw two boxes by two boxes. This is a two by two array. And then, just like with our last problem, I need to break apart the numbers into friendlier pieces. Now, this time I'm breaking apart both numbers though. So 24, I'll break into 20 and four. 31, I'll break into 30 and one. And I'm gonna put 20 and four along the tops of the boxes and 30 and one along the sides of the boxes. And it doesn't really matter. You could put 30 and one on top and 20 and four on the side, as long as you keep those together. The 20 and the four need to stay together and the 30 and the one need to stay together because they're part of the same number. Okay, now I'm ready to multiply. So in this box, I'm gonna multiply 30 times 20. If I know two times three, I know 30 times 20, 600. In this box, I'm gonna multiply 30 times four, which is 120. This box is for one times 20, 20, and this box is for one times four, which is four. So if you're confused about what numbers to multiply in each box, think about it like a multiplication table, just smaller. This is three times four. It's in the fours column, it's underneath the four, and it's in the threes row, it's next to the three. So this is three times four. This is seven times six, it's in the sixes column and the sevens row. It works the same in the box method. This is 30 times four. It's in the fours column, it's under the four, and it's in thirties row, it's next to 30. So that's where I multiply 30 times four. This is one times four because it's in the fours column and the ones row this time. Finally, we just need to add all of our partial products together. So that's all four numbers from these boxes. And I like to stack them, line them up with the largest number on top and the smallest number on the bottom. If it's easier for you to add, add the numbers just two at a time, then you should use that strategy. I do okay adding all four numbers at once. Some people have trouble with that. So if you have trouble with that, you should add 600 plus 120 and see what that is, and then add 20 to it, see what that is, and then add four more. I'm gonna go ahead and add them all together like this, and my answer is 744. Let's look at one more example, this time 57 times 68. So I have my boxes, two by two, and I'm gonna break up my numbers. 57 becomes 50 and seven. And I'll go ahead and put those along the top of my boxes. 68, I'm gonna break into 60 and eight and put that on the side. Now I multiply. 60 times 50 is going in this box and that is 3000. 60 times seven is going in this box, that's 420. 
eight times 50 goes here, that's 400, and eight times seven goes here, which is 56. And remember, think about it like a little multiplication table. And finally, I just add up all my partial products, and I got the answer, 3,876. Let's review. Remember, you break both numbers into smaller, friendlier pieces. Expanded form is an easy way to do this, but you can break them however you want. Multiply each of the pieces and then add them back together and use the boxes to stay organized and keep track of all the pieces. Make sure that you've multiplied all the pieces that you need to multiply. This video was created by La Fontaine of Knowledge. Check the link in the description for lesson materials that go along with the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.